Welcome to part two of an introduction to educational psychology. This brief introduction is intended to provide an overview of the importance of frameworks and models. My name is Bill Hewitt, and I am Professor Emeritus at Valdosta State University and Adjunct Professor at Capella University. The presentation is narrated by Jeff Hewitt, who is helping me produce these videos. Those involved in professional education have one major question. Why do some individuals learn the knowledge and skills that we are trying to teach while others do not or have a lot of difficulty in doing so? This question has been considered for centuries and thousands of studies have been completed just in the last 50 years that have contributed an enormous amount of data to help address this question. Unfortunately, it is very difficult to make sense of all these findings, many of which are contradictory. Frameworks and models are designed to organize information so that's more understandable. A framework identifies concepts and categories that can be used to simplify the data. For example, this framework for organizing information about an effective professional proposes that educators should have content knowledge as well as knowledge about learners in general, should have knowledge and skills in teaching strategies and methods, and should operate within a set of professional standards. Moreover, they should have dispositions that allow them to interact effectively with diverse learners and be able to use technology. Stop the video and take a moment to brainstorm on reasons or factors that you think might influence student learning. That is, what are some reasons, both within and across classrooms and schools, that you believe research has shown will influence what and how students learn? Write down as many as you can. Congratulations! You're beginning to think like an educational psychologist. Did you list factors such as location of the neighborhood or the community? Some characteristics of the family, such as mother's education or the number of books and magazines in the house? Those are called context factors. Did you list any teacher characteristics such as years of experience or levels of expectations? Perhaps you listed some learner characteristics such as level of intelligence, motivation, or amount of background knowledge. These are called input factors as these are qualities and attributes that teachers and learners bring with them to the teaching learning experience. Together, these are called presage factors because they come before and predict a future event. In this case, the events that take place during the teaching and learning process. Did you think of some factors such as teaching strategies or specific teaching events such as type of questions asked or perhaps the quality of the teacher's presentation? These are one type of classroom process factors labeled teacher behaviors. Or perhaps you listed some learner process factors such as learner engagement or working on content that will be the target of an assessment. These are labeled as learner or student behaviors. Finally, did you think of the type of learning assessment that was completed such as federal or state mandated basic skills testing? These are labeled as output factors because they are deemed the outcomes of the teaching learning process. When these are put together into a framework, it helps organize the hypothesis and research that is developed on factors that influence student learning. When the components of the framework are linked in such a way that specific relationships are shown among the components and the factors, that's called a model. This is a figure showing John Proctor's model with an emphasis on the importance of teacher expectations and teacher efficacy. Proctor organized the research to show how a high level of expectations and a belief that teaching could have an impact on student performance in the classroom could impact instructional classroom practice, which, in turn, impacts learners and engagement and ultimately lead to higher levels of student achievement. This is another model showing how the content factors related to the community, school and state policies, and the family influence the types of teachers that are hired and important student characteristics. The teacher characteristics, state and school policies, then have an impact on teacher classroom behavior. This, along with student characteristics, influences student behavior and then student behavior impacts teacher behavior as a reciprocal relationship is established. Finally, state policies related to measures of learning achievement and student behavior impact learning achievement measures outside of the classroom. Student achievement at the end of the learning experience then provides the student characteristics for the next learning experience. In 2009, Hattie published the results of a meta-analysis of 800 meta-analyses, the results of decades of research on factors impacting student achievement. He used the Presage Process Product Framework to organize his findings. Overall, he identified 138 factors or variables that he deemed to be significant. In the context category, Hattie identified the socioeconomic status of the household and parental involvement as the most important factors. At the school level, Hattie identified 21 factors to be important. For example, he found that those schools who had implemented a formative evaluation of teaching as well as a school-wide program focused on classroom behavior had better student achievement. For input factors, 
Hattie found that teachers who had been provided micro-teaching experiences in their pre-service programs or had engaged in professional development activities had a better-than-average impact on student achievement. As for student characteristics, Hattie found that students' reports of the grades they received the previous year and whether or not they were at the appropriate stage of cognitive development for their age were the most important factors. In fact, these two were better predictors of student achievement than were measures of the learner's cognitive abilities as measured on an intelligence test. In terms of classroom behaviors, Hattie identified 24 factors that covered a wide range of behaviors from using metacognitive strategies while teaching to providing clarity and feedback during the teaching process. For student classroom behavior, Hattie found that learners who engaged in more self-verbalizing or self-questioning and had higher levels of time on task demonstrated higher levels of achievement. Hattie also found that positive teacher-student relationships, the use of peer tutoring, and higher levels of classroom cohesion were related to higher levels of student achievement. A study of educational psychology will help educators identify and organize information related to research on student learning and achievement, as well as information on assessment, measurement, and evaluation. In combination with knowledge and research on human growth and development, and learning that can be used to facilitate learning in a wide variety of contexts and content.